Welcome back ladies and gents. Now in this video I'll be looking at 8.2 using trigonometric identities. 8.2 represents chapter 8 section 2 of the Pearson A-level maths pure maths year 2 textbook. This particular section is all about using trigonometric identities to convert the parametric equations of a given curve into its equivalent Cartesian equation. So I've got some beautiful identities up on the board. Addition formulae, each of these are true for any A and B. Double angle formulae, each of these are true for any A. Reciprocal tricks, and more beautiful identities over here. So let's have a look at question number one now. It says the curve C has parametric equations x equal 8 cos t, y equal 1 over 4 sec squared t. t is more than minus pi over 2, but less than pi over 2. So t is measured in radians because um, the interval is in terms of pi. Right, part A. Find the Cartesian equation of C. Well, the Cartesian equation of C is just an equation that connects y and x. So we need to find this equation. The very first step is to actually write down the parametric equations. So I've got y equal 1 over 4 sec squared t and I've got x equal 8 cos t. I need to somehow connect y and x. Now ladies and gents, what I'm going to do first of all is make cos t the subject in this particular equation. Something beautiful will happen. So I've got x over 8 equal cos t. If I go back to this beautiful equation over here, I can rewrite it as y equal 1 over 4 cos squared t. Because I know that sec squared t is just 1 over cos squared t. I'm going to call this equation 1, okay, and this one over here equation 2. I can substitute equation 2 into equation 1 and by doing that, that will eliminate the t, hence connecting y and x. So I've got y equal to 1 over 4 in brackets, well cos t is just x over 8 squared. All I need to do is just simplify this equation over here. And my Cartesian equation is just y equal 16 all over x squared. Let's have a look at part b now. It says sketch the curve c on the appropriate domain. The domain of the curve c is just the set of possible values of x that the curve c takes. So in general, the domain represents x. So let's start off by writing that the domain represents x. To find the set of possible values of x that the curve C takes, my very first step is to sketch x against t, for t is more than minus pi over 2 and less than pi over 2. Okay, so here is my graph of x equal 8 cos t, for t is more than minus pi over 2 but less than pi over 2. To work out the domain of the curve C, I'm finding the set of possible values of x that the curve C takes. So what I need to focus on is the x-axis and in particular I'm looking at this portion over here. So by looking at that portion, I see that x will be more than 0, but less than or equal to 8. x is a real number. Right, before I sketch the curve C, which represents y equals 16 over x squared, for the domain x is more than 0, but less than or equal to 8, I'm going to actually recap the shape of the graph of y equal a over x squared, where a is greater than 0, x not equal to 0. So I want to look at the shape of y equal a over x squared, a is greater than 0, x is not equal to 0. What does the shape of this particular graph look like? Well, it was covered in year 1 and the shape is as follows. We've got two curves that look something like that. Okay. There are two asymptotes. The first asymptote is the y-axis. The second asymptote is the x-axis. The equation of the y-axis is just x equal to 0. And the equation of the x-axis is just y equal to 0. So this here was a quick recap of the shape of the graph of y equal a over x squared, where a is greater than 0, x is not equal to 0. Year 1 content. Now, I'm going to sketch curve C, which represents y equals 16 over x squared for this particular domain. Okay, so the sketch of the curve C, which represents y equals 16 over x squared for the domain x is more than 0, but less than or equal to 8, looks something like this over here. 
Now at x equal 8, the circle is shaded because x equal 8 is included in the domain. Let's move on to question number 2. It says the curve C has parametric equations x equal 1 over 3 sine t, y equals sine 3t, t is more than 0 but less than pi over 2. Find the Cartesian equation of the curve C. To find the Cartesian equation of the curve C, our objective is to connect y and x. But this one over here is quite interesting. I've got y equals sine 3t. And I've got x equal a third sine t. First of all, I'm going to make sine t the subject in this particular equation. And if I do that, I get sine t equal to 3x. Okay, not bad, not bad. If I look over here, y equals sine 3t, the angle is 3t. But over here, the angle is t. So how do I involve t's only as my angle in this particular equation? I can do something very clever. Split the 3t into t plus 2t. So I can rewrite sine 3t as sine in bracket t plus 2t. Beautiful. Now, I can expand this sine using the addition formula for sine. And if I do that, I obtain the following result. Right, that's looking juicy. I've got angles t's involved now. But the issue is I've got angles 2t also involved. What I can do is replace the sine 2t with 2 sine t cos t and replace the cos 2t with the representation which is in terms of sine only and that representation will just be 1 minus 2 sine squared t. So if I do that, I obtain sine t in bracket 1 minus 2 sine squared t plus cos t in bracket 2 sine t cos t. This is looking absolutely beautiful, guys. Beautiful. The reason why this is beautiful is because I've got angle t involved only. There is no 2t. Nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is expand and simplify this. So if I expand and simplify, I obtain the following. Sine t minus 2 sine cubed t plus 2 sine t cos squared t. Right. There is an issue at the moment and that issue is the cos squared t. I want sine only. Well, I can replace the cos squared t with 1 minus sine squared t. I'm just using the identity sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equal to 1 for any theta. So if I replace cos squared t with 1 minus sine squared t, I obtain the following result. After expanding and simplifying y, I end up with y equal 3 sine t minus 4 sine cubed t. I'm going to call this equation 1. And this beautiful equation over here, sine t is equal 3x, I'm going to call it equation 2. I'm ready to now connect y and x. That is, I'm ready to find the Cartesian equation of the curve c. All I need to do is substitute equation 2 into equation 1. I replace the sine t's with 3x. So at the end, I obtain y is equal to 9x minus 108x cubed.